Today is another video in my series on Ardropilot and specifically setting up Ardrocopter on a Cube Autopilot on a DJI F550 frame. Now this video we're going to talk about compasses. In my first video we talked about GPS and some of the things that you guys need to be aware of on that. Today we are talking about the same modules but we're going to be discussing compasses and whilst it is inside the same unit we're going to talk about the mag specifically because there's quite a lot of things that have changed changed on this, especially now with the CAN bus mags. And there's been a lot of improvements coming into Ardrocopter and Ardropilot, allowing you to easily configure which ones are which. And that's what we're going to talk about in this one. Now, before we dive into it, if you are interested in getting any of this equipment, please do check out 3DXR in the UK. Without their support, I wouldn't have been able to make these videos. They're a fantastic dealer that has all the equipment from the Cube Autopilot, the here GPS, the mags. And if there is anything you need, there's a link to them in the description of this video as well. Okay, so with regards to compass units, now, as I mentioned in my first video, really all of this is intertwined with GPS. We've had two connection types up till now. We've had our traditional serial connection or I2C actually for the compass that we have on this traditional GPS. And we've now got the CAN based ones that we've got in the here too. Now, when you were using your traditional style connection, there was very little setup needed. When you plugged your connector in, Ardropilot would pretty much detect the compass and it would detect the GPS automatically. Ardropilot was set up to always default setting an external compass detected on the compass one and then any internal compasses detected that are on board the controller on compass two and compass three and those internal compasses are something to be aware of because they've actually been what part of the problem has been with using can now just to explain that in a little bit more detail most of the cube autopilots for instance generally have had at least one compass on board internally on the device then you had your compass built into your gps as i said on serial what would happen is you would plug your external unit in, Ardropilot would detect that and what it would then do is go, oh, external compass, set that as the main compass and then set the internal ones as default for backup compasses, so MAG2 and MAG3. And that system worked perfectly fine. However, when it came to going over to Canvas, a few problems came to light. And one of those problems was that the way Ardropilot actually detected compasses meant that CAN-based compasses were not actually detected as default when connected. They were actually pushed to the back of the list. And the reason for that was when Ardropilot fired up, it would look on board the system and it would say serial external compass had priority one in every case case, onboard compass would then come next and then CAN bus would come third. And this caused quite a few problems and the reason mostly was a number of the autopilots actually had two compasses on board. Then if you were connecting in one CAN bus compass it would then actually stick that to MAG3 not MAG1 as default. Now you could change that however you actually had to know to do that and it wasn't easy and it was a bit of a fudge and it wasn't particularly straightforward. The bigger problem came when it came to adding two of them because what would again happen is the autopilot would go my onboard compass one and two were on default position one and two because there was no serial mag on can one would go into three and then the fourth one would basically be ignored and it wouldn't come up at all and that meant is whilst you even had two external mags actually your autopilot was trying to use the internal ones and use this one last. Now there was a way around this and you had to use something called the compass mask and what you basically had to do was tell the system to ignore internal compasses completely. Then you then had the ability to connect in your mag compass and then it would detect that and put that forward. But it was something you had to be aware of and you had to mess with. There was also some really quirky behavior if you were using one serial compass and one mag compass because it would detect the serial one as default for compass one. It would then set the internal 
compasses to two and three because they come ahead of the priority of CAN bus and then your one mag compass would own four and wouldn't show up at all either and again you had to mess with the defaults. However in the latest test versions of Audropilot and the latest versions that are coming out now this has all been dramatically improved and you now have the ability to actually very simply set the compass order yourself and tell your system what compass you want to come this first second and third and you can now see the device IDs for these as well because whilst I did say earlier that you could move the compasses around part of the problem was you didn't always know which one was which because they weren't easily identified either however again that has been updated in the latest firmware so what we're going to do now in a moment is jump into Mission Planner and what we're going to do is take a quick look at the compass when you are using your standard serial connection which is this one here but we're then going to take a deep dive into using dual compasses on the cube on CAN bus and show you guys those new features that you will have to be able to configure it to get it working properly. So first of all we'll just take a quick look at the traditional I2C or serial compass on the standard here GPS. Now again I've got this plugged in with no configuration done and already it's picked up GPS just as I showed in the other video. If we go under setup and under compass you can see that it has already configured things for us. It has set the first compass as external and that will be that one there and then it's detected the two internal compasses that are on the here uh, on the cube orange and it is set them to compass two and compass three and the next simple thing we would need to do is do the onboard mag calibration now i'm going to do that as part of my one of my final videos before we actually fly the aircraft rather at this point here now next i will jump into the canvas compass setup because that is a little bit different and there are some things you do need to be aware of on that. So I've rebooted the system and now I have the two CAN based mag units within the here two GPS is connected. Now I'm using public firmware on this and I'm using the beta version of Mission Planner. Now I'm first of all going to show you what is public today and then I'm going to jump into the beta version and the reason for that is because the new settings for this which you're going to be using moving forward are actually in the beta releases or the daily builds and not in the public releases but this will become the norm. Now as I mentioned at the start there is some quirk around the compass behavior so if we go into setup and we go into compass as I mentioned earlier the system prioritizes the inputs differently. External compass via GPS one basically will always be priority so it will set that to number one if it's connected then internal compasses within your autopilot then CAN bus and if we actually look at this the system here has put my internal compass as number one and then it's actually put the CAN compasses as two and three. Now the problem with this is we don't actually know which ones this is. If you're using this with a two internal compasses and two CANs it could actually ignore the CAN bus compasses altogether and they wouldn't appear at all. Now they have added this feature called hardware ID that allows you to see what is connected and the model of compass it is but in this section you can't change that. Now when I jump over to the beta version in a second you'll actually see the new configuration options for this that actually allows us to set it and know which one is in what position. Now if we do look at this a minute you can see we've got how many compasses? We've got three compasses being detected. So we've got one internal on SPI which is the internal compass in here. You've then got two UAV CAN compasses. So that's why when we go under here we've got the internal one on number one and then we've got these two over here. However I always prefer having the main compass on compass one for starters and whilst you can change the primary compass up here it isn't as nice and easy to set up as you might like it to be and in the new firmware you can do it differently. Now in the existing if you want to do this what I would simply then do is say okay the compass two and three is th those two there we know that from the hardware ID showing us only three compasses so I would then choose say compass 2 as the primary compass which would be this one here rather than compass 1 
and that way it would fail safe on the others. Now, there's a much nicer way of doing this in the new software, and what I'm going to do now is jump over to that and show you that and show you how to actually do it. OK, so I've now rebooted into one of the very latest daily builds. And if I go over to the compass screen, you can see things look a little bit different. And the reason I'm showing you this is this is how you're going to actually set them up in future. So if yours looks a lot like this, this is the bit you need to do. And this is the new improved setup. Now, at the top, we've now got the place where we now set the order of the compasses rather than just let the system do it and you choose which one you want it to you do. Now if we go back under hardware ID you can see we're still showing three compass devices available so we've got one two three and now we've also got a fourth one down here five and six and what these are is these are the priority for the devices so it's actually preset the internal one on spi as number one just like it did before but now we can actually change that so if we go into the compass area we got the each individual one here so now we can actually set which one we want to be where. So really what I want is compass one to be a CAN one, compass two to be CAN, and then SPI be number three. So to do this, we would simply click up. And if we click down, we've now got, you can see the two switched over. Now we can actually tell which one is which because you've got bus zero and bus one. Bus zero should be CAN one and bus one would be CAN two. So basically I've set CAN one as the first one that as the second one and that is then the compass order done now below this you can now choose if you want to disable any of the compasses so what you could actually say here is right we've got compass number three but i don't want to use the internal one at all i would rather actually use just the two uav can compasses and that is the new configuration that is coming into it in the future it is very very straightforward but it does mean you're able to actually do it far more simply and the place where this really kicks in is when you've got more than three i'll actually hook up the fourth one now and we'll actually take a look at that quickly just to show you how it behaves when we do that okay so we've rebooted and you can now see we've actually got four because i've got the serial one on two canvas and the internal one in the cube orange as well now the thing to remember is it will actually only accept three of them as part of the compass setup so use one two or three but you can now configure four if you wanted to so as you can see what we've got is uav can one two as the main ones which i set earlier it's currently got spi as the three now spi would be the internal one and then i2c is the fourth which is actually the serial compass on the GPS one port. Now, obviously in this setup, you're not gonna want the uh, SPI one to be used above the other external one. So we would set that up to there and set that change. So the system then will use all three external ones rather than the internal ones for the mags if it needed to do it. So that is pretty much it for the mag calibration, really. Um, there's no other settings you really need to have a play with at this time. Obviously, I can see a lot more being done around this um, with regards to the way it uses the mags in the future. However, this setup is much better than what we've had in the past. And you've now got the ability to actually see them, check the device IDs. You can go under the hardware ID for them as well. Um, it asks you to reboot when you change those changes as well. But you've got the ability now to be able to move these compasses around and set them the way you want them rather than actually have the system force you into doing things and having to use something like a compass mask to disable internal sensors you can simply move things around now and that is the end of my video on the compass sensors. Now, as I mentioned at the start, it is worth checking out my video on the GPS because these two are directly entwined. This series is going to continue to talk about Pilot and specifically Ardrocopter on the Cube. So if you do like the information that's been provided in this video, please do hit that subscribe button. Please also hit that little bell next to it as well and make sure you set that to all and you'll get an update on any more of these videos as I release them. As I mentioned at the start, please do check out 3DXR in the UK. They are a fantastic dealer and they're a massive supporter of the channel. And I'm always very grateful for all the help and support they've given me over the years. So if you are looking for any equipment, please do check them out. That's it. Thank you for watching and I will do another video again soon.